When applying mathematics to practical situations, one often has to compute extreme values of functions. The function f, shown here in this picture, has several extreme values. Our task may be to compute the extreme values of this function f on some interval from a to b. In the case of the function in picture, there are extreme values at the points x1, x2 and x3. These points x1 and x2 are local maximum value points, x3 is a local minimum value point. If the task was to determine the maximum and minimum value of this function over the interval from a to b, we would then simply select the largest and the smallest of these local extreme values. The largest in this case would be the value of f at x2 and the smallest would be the value of f at x3. From previous considerations we know that if a differentiable function f has a local extreme value point x equals c, then f prime at c must be zero. This is so because at a local extreme value point c, the line tangent to the graph of f must be horizontal. We can say even a little bit more. If c is a local maximum value point, then on the left hand side of c, right before c, the function f is increasing and on the right hand side it is decreasing. This means that on the left hand side the lines tangent to the graph of this function have a positive slope and this means that the derivative of the function f must be positive for x less than c and near the point c. Likewise, the derivative of f is negative for x larger than c but near the point c. This follows since the lines tangent to the graph of f immediately on the right hand side of c have a negative slope. These observations can be summarized. A point c is a local maximum value point of a differentiable function f if f prime at c is zero and if f prime changes its sign from positive to negative at x equals c. If the function f has a second derivative and if the second derivative at c is negative then the point c is a local maximum value point of the function f. Of course here we assume that f prime at c is zero. At a local minimum value point of a differentiable function f, f prime at c is zero and f prime changes its sign from negative to positive as indicated by this picture. Again, this can be summarized if f prime at c is zero and if the second derivative of f is positive at the point c, then c is a local minimum value point of the function f. Because if the second derivative is positive at c, this means that near the point c the first derivative is increasing and therefore changes its sign from negative to positive. These observations can be summarized as the second derivative test. If f prime at c is zero and f double prime at c is positive, the point c is a local minimum value point of f. If f prime at c is zero and f double prime at c is negative, the point c is a local maximum value point of the function f. And if f prime at c is zero and f double prime at c is zero, this second derivative test is inconclusive. If this is the case, we must take a closer look at the derivative f prime and figure out whether it changes its sign and if it does, then how? As an example, consider the function f of x equals x to the fourth. This function takes positive values when x is different from zero. It takes the value zero when x equals zero. So this point x equals zero is a global minimum value point for this particular function. So that is easy to see and immediate by the definition of the function. Let us see how 
the results that we have developed can be applied to this particular function x to the fourth. Its first derivative is 4 times x cubed, second derivative is 12 times x squared. Both the first and the second derivative take the value 0 at x equals 0. Therefore, this means that the second derivative test is inc inconclusive for this particular function. The first derivative, 4 times x cubed, changes its sign from negative to positive at x equals 0. And this means that x equals 0 is a minimum value point for this particular function f, a fact that was immediately obvious from the definition of f in this case. In this example, we have to find the local minimum maximum of the function 3 times x to the power 5 minus 5 times x cubed. The derivative of this function f is um, 15x to the fourth minus 15x squared. This derivative factorizes as 15x squared times x squared minus 1, which further factorizes as 15x squared times x minus 1 times x plus 1. So this derivative takes the value 0 if x is negative 1, 0, or 1. We further have to analyze the sign of the derivative. We have established that the derivative takes a value 0 at x equals negative 1, 0, and 1. The quantity x squared is positive except if x is 0. So x squared is positive on all of these four intervals. x minus 1 is positive if x is larger than 1 and negative otherwise. So the sign of x minus 1 behaves like now indicated here in this diagram. x plus 1 is positive if x is larger than negative 1 and negative otherwise. So the sign of x plus 1 behaves like now indicated in this diagram. And next, we observe that f prime is 15 times x squared times x minus 1 times x plus 1. 15 is positive, so the sign of f prime is positive in those columns where we have even number of negative sign rows. So we conclude that f prime of x is positive if x is less than negative 1. It is negative between negative 1 and 0. It is also negative between 0 and 1. And then when x is larger than 1, f prime of x is again positive. In this way of analyzing the sign of f prime, we can conclude that um, x minus 1 is a local maximum value point, and x equals 1 is a local minimum value point, and x equals 0 is not a local extreme value point at all. We may also use the second derivative test for this particular function, f of x was 3 times x to the power 5 minus 5 times x cubed. The first derivative is 15x to the fourth minus 15x squared. And the second derivative is 60 times x cubed minus 30 times x. f double prime at negative 1 is minus 60 plus 30. This is a negative number. And this means that x equals negative 1 is a local maximum value point f double prime at 1 is 60 minus 30, this is positive, and it means that x equals 1 is a local minimum value point. f double prime at 0 is 0, and this means that the test is inconclusive for x equals 0. Here is a graph of this function, 3 times x to the power 5 minus 5 times, times x cubed. The graph is symmetric with respect to the origin, x equals 1 is a local minimum, and x equals negative 1 is a local maximum value of this function f. A function f which is continuous on a closed interval from a to b attains its maximum and minimum values. If f is further differentiable on the open interval from a to b, we may use differentiation to find these extreme values of f, on the closed interval from A to B. And the steps are the following. We first compute the derivative of f, f prime. 
Then we solve the equation f prime of x equals zero and evaluate the function f at the solutions. Next step is to compute f at a and f at b. And the last step is to choose the largest and the smallest number of these computed values of f. Those are the extreme values of f on this interval from a to b. As an example of this procedure, let us find the extreme values of the function f of x equals x cubed minus 2 times x plus 2 on the interval from 0 to 2. We observe that this function is differentiable everywhere, hence the function will take its extreme values on the interval from 0 to 2 either at the points where the derivative vanishes or at the endpoints of the interval. So to find the extreme values of the function f, we simply compute first the derivative of f. The derivative is 3 times x squared minus 2. The derivative takes the value 0 at x equals plus or minus square root of 2 divided by 3. This can be written also as plus or minus square root of 6 and that divided by 3. Now we observe that we were supposed to figure out what are the extreme values on the closed interval from 0 to 2. The point minus square root of 6 divided by 3 is negative and does not belong to this, that interval. Therefore, x equals minus square root of 6 over 3 will not be taken into account. So we had that f prime of x equals 0 if x is plus square root of 6 over 3 on the interval from 0 to 2. The value of f at this point can easily be evaluated. f at square root of 6 over 3 is 6 times square root of 6 over 27 minus 2 times square root of 6 over 3 plus 2. And this simplifies to minus 4 times square root of 6 over 9 plus 2. So we have that the value of f at square root of 6 over 3 is minus 4 times square root of 6 over 9 plus 2. The value of f at 0 is easy to evaluate, it is 2. The value of f at 2 is 6. So now we just compare these three values and observe that the first one is the smallest and this is the minimum value of the function f on the interval from 0 to 2 and the value of f at x equals 2 is the largest value. This function f of x equals x cubed minus 2 times x plus 2 has the graph shown here on the right. On the interval from 0 to 2, it attains its maximum value at the end point of the interval and its minimum value at the point square root of 6 over 3. As a summary, we have now observed that a point C is a local maximum value point of a function f if f prime at C is 0 and if f prime changes its sign from positive to negative at x equals C. Likewise, the point C is a local minimum value point if f prime at C is 0 and if f prime changes its sign from negative to positive at x equals C. When having to find the extreme values of a differentiable function f on a closed interval. Then one proceeds as follows. First compute the derivative of this function f, then find the points in that interval where the derivative takes the value 0, evaluate f at those points and at the endpoints of the interval, and then simply choose the largest and the smallest one of these values. These are the extreme values of that particular function on the given interval.